Welcome back to Restaurant Food Fest, everybody. Today we are going to do a little leftover stuff, and I'm going to show you how to make your own season salt. It's really easy. This is episode 69. Yeah, you get all season salts. Um, you can make your own. They're they're really really easy to do. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this one because I cooked pork shoulder um, and this is the dry rub that I use on the pork shoulder but it's also good for a ton of other things you use. Uh, pork shoulders are really really versatile uh, if you're looking for the uh, heavy fat content uh, barbecue, slow roast, pulled pork things of that nature and they're not real expensive. That's huge especially you know, yeah. in, in this economy. You can get like two of them for seventeen dollars, I think, and they're they're. I mean, it's actually a roast that's this big. But I'm going to show you the dry rub that I used to begin with. Um, main component, salt. Use any kind you like. I'm just using generic. I think the tab wasn't out. That would cause that. Oh, now the tab's out, and that's off. Oh well. Here we go. Salt. I have no real um, amounts that I use. I just kind of pour and go, depending on the flavor I want. So, salt. Everything else that I cook with generally, onion, garlic. I guess what? Let me see if we can get some sort of measurements going. How much is that? Quarter cup. Mm, eighth of a cup of onion powder. Same amount of garlic. A chunk. You know what I did forget? Pepper. Pepper. Pepper is going to vary depending on how strong the pepper is you have. I'm just going to use it, again, generic. I'm not going to sit here and grind pepper out. That's a lot less. That's more like uh, two tablespoons, maybe. This is a very general seasoned salt. This You can use this for anything you want. Now, when I'm doing stuff, particularly for dry rubs, uh, for barbecue, slow and go cooking, I, I add more things to it. So that would be a basic seasoned salt. Now when you see, see most seasoned salts are red. It's from paprika. Adds a little bit of smokiness to it. I'm going to add about, I don't know, three or four tablespoons of that. And cumin. Again, cumin is the smell you get from chili powder. And I'm going to add a couple, maybe a tablespoon or so of that. And there you have it. It's a basic season salt. You probably have all these things in your house already. You don't have to go buy it. And if you're doing protein products with this, sugar. Sugar helps things caramelize. Um, it doesn't really add a sweet flavor to it. It aids in putting the crust on it. So I've got, what, five teaspoons of that in there? And this is your basic, a basic dry rub. You can use it on anything. And what I do is just, I have a little shaker with some uncooked rice in the bottom of it. Because you're not <laughs> using any anti-caking agents, if you just keep this, it's going to lump up and you'll never get it out of there. So. There you go. Basic dry rub. Now, what I did with that is I took the pork butt, it's actually a shoulder, 
why it's called a butt, I have no idea. But it comes from the shoulder of the pig. I encased both, I had two of them, and I crusted them both, all sides, with this product, with the dry rub that I made. So what you end up with That's part of one. Now this, all this up here is from the caramelization mm -hmm. from the show. It's caramelization. It's just that, I mean, if you put a roast in, um, when you're cooking these shoulders, it's not, it's a long process. It's, this is cooked for six to eight hours. Um, you want to go slow because there's a lot of fat in pork shoulders and what you want to do is get that fat to render out it's going to make the meat taste wonderful but you don't want to bite into a big chunk of fat so you put them on i put this on for at 250 for six hours um, turned it up a little bit to get a little more browning to it you can start it high this is generally what you do is you start it real high get it encrusted and then turn it down and then cook it forever. If you have that way it cooks all the way through. Yeah. If you have a charcoal pit or anything that you can sit there, if you would try and do this on a propane grill, it's probably going to take three tanks of propane to do it. So I do mine in the oven. Um, but if you have the availability of an outside pit where you can just start a, a wood fire, set these on there, a nice low fire, and just let it cook. You, you cannot overcook them because there's so much fat, it's going to keep it moist. This has been reheated three times already, um, and as you can see, it's still, the product is still very, very moist. Um, the flavor on it is incredible. This is great stuff to make Cuban sandwiches with, the roast pork um, paninis. Yeah, we did that a couple episodes back. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the... the the product that they use to make it. Um, the flavor on this is absolutely fabulous. Mm. What happens is all those seasonings that you, if you can see, I encrusted everything all the way around it. Any place that I could put the seasonings. The fat acts as a vehicle to infuse it with flavor. The longer you let it sit in the dry rub, the more infused it's gonna get. So if you want to maintain some of that pork taste, don't let it sit too long. Um, I let this sit maybe a half hour and then jammed it in the oven. But as that, all those seasonings get into the fat of the pork and it runs through the meat, it just carries all that flavor with it and it's incredibly good. But that's just straight. Um, the, the main thing that people do with pork shoulders, pork butts, is they make pulled pork. Typical barbecued pork sandwich. So what I did was I had another one that I had cooked and the consistency on this is I mean you can see it's very I chopped it down. You know take this out cut it down like that chopped it added barbecue sauce I made my own again uh, barbecue sauce is super easy the thing that most people forget on barbecue sauce is you need molasses. That's that kind of bitter flavor um, and it has that dark richness to it. But it's basically ketchup, molasses, onion, garlic, salt, pepper, and um, any other seasoning you want to put into it. But that's the basis for a barbecue sauce. Cook this again in this sauce. Now, the thing that's nice about this is it you can change this. Right now it's sweet. Barbecue. It's a normal pulled pork barbecue sandwich. But we're going to change it. If you take your basic barbecue, very easy. this knife. Take 
some onion. I happen to have a little piece here that'll do me just fine. I'm gonna keep this in kind of chunks. Or if you wanna turn around, turn that, put that green fan on. small burner, take out the other side for large burner. Yes. Once again, we are taxing Ward's culinary skills. So he's heating he's he's that pan up. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I'm not going to use a whole lot. But as I say, the nice thing is you, you know, you have a big that thing's probably four pounds. We turned it into barbecue. There's a meal there. Now you can take each little piece of this. You can change it to an adobo real easy. Um, you make it oriental. It's all on the seasonings yet. So like I say, I'm just going to take some pepper and onion. Cut that up kind of large. Now let's get more. I'm going to put a little bit of little bit, tiny little bit of oil. Wife got a new pan, so I don't want to ruin it for her. Take these onions and peppers. in here. Now take some of your pork barbecue. Good. Okay, we'll take some of the pork barbecue. Add that to it. down a little bit just to get warm because the barbecue is cold right now so as it heats up it's going to loosen up all the fats are going to dissolve Shoot just with a little bit of plain old white vinegar. About, was it a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons, something like that. Not much. A little dusting. Habanero sauce. And Worcester shots. Basically, this is a version of an adobo. This is a southwest version. If you would use um, Asian ingredients, it, it would, of course, be an Asian adobo. And I'm going to add a little more cumin to this. Did I put the cumin away? I think it's still out there. Mm -hmm. Look, over there. Ah. Losing product. Cilantro would work real well in here.
check one thing. Ha! Jalapenos. And a little bit of brown. That's it. It's pretty much done. Service over rice on a burrito. Um, it's you change that flavor completely. That's not going to work. Too big of pieces. Plate. There we go. You've changed your barbecue. <coughs> it still has a little bit of that sweet to it, but it's a completely different product. It has a lot of heat, uh, more like an adobo. And of course, like you say, this one's a Southwest. It's really good. That pork holds so much flavor because of the fat content. Um, not something you want to eat every day if you're worried about your weight. Because they have, a, like I say, it's a very high fat content. But, again, this goes with the pork loin, chicken breasts. These are things you can take and change into a variety of meals. Um, ate this to begin with, made Cuban sandwiches out of it. I just like the flavor of this so much that I really don't change it a whole lot. Um, just because it, it's just, to me, so good. It's perfect pork. But these, these things last a long time. So, it's a good guy. Uh, well, Jeff's laughing because, no, it doesn't last a long time. It goes away. In a normal household, that barbecue you can take, put into packages, and freeze it. So, I get tired of eating sweet things all the time. So, I don't, I'm not a big barbecue fan. But, I get a craving for it. So, you take it, you put it in the little packages, put it in the freezer. It'll last for a good while. You're in a mood for it, well, pull it out, heat it up, you're done. And like you say, you can change it to whatever you want. Put this over rice. Um, you can make it soupier, uh, add more soy sauce, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, put it over noodles, um, have a noodle bowl. Or even take it, put it in your panini press. Make yep. Panini. yep. It's just it's a good product to keep around. Um, add red beans to this and you got yourself a chili. You know, it's a pork chili. Just incredible. Like I say, the fat content, fat carries flavor. Pork shoulders are really high fat. That's why you cook them low and slow. You render that fat out of there, but it makes the meat really, really good, really tender. So that's it for today. Cool. I'm all greasy. And if anybody remembers, last week we talked about doing a cookbook uh, that's still in the works. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't forgotten about it. We just haven't gotten around to it. We will. Mm -hmm. um, we sent out a shout out last week to our community, sending us asking how we could get more viewers, you know, how we can market the show a little bit better. So keep those uh, suggestions coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you can send us any questions you have on Twitter. We're restaurant underscore food. You could send us an email at restaurantfoodfest.com. No, no, you can't, <laughs> but no. Uh, Restaurantfoodfest at gmail.com. I ask him the same question every week. Yeah, always while I'm stuffing my face. Shut up. You can also look us up on our regular site. Drop us something in the comments at restaurantfoodfast.com. And that's pretty much it. While Chuck sits here and eats an entire pork roast by himself. It's really good. He does it during the show because then nobody else will get to it while. Well, yeah, once the show ends, it's like a scavenger hunt. People are just. <laughs> Yeah, it's really something to see. Maybe one week we'll shoot the, the ending episode and <laughs> let everybody see how... How the it, food disappears? Yeah. It's kind of... Well, the Wookiee's not here, so it's going to go a little slower. We'd lose our rating if we did that. Yeah, that's true. It, it does, Graphic it, violence. Yeah, it does get kind of obscene. Wild animals eating. But Why does it get obscene, Jeff? No comment. Jeff Come likes on. to eat naked. Mm -mm. All right. <laughs> and, all right, until next week, I'm Ward. And I'm not. It's Restaurant Food Fast. We're out.